everybody happy 21 we made it cynthia we did. we did the summer and cynthia show is now in its second year <laughs> we freaking made it i just i'm still in awe of just that and it's the little things like surviving such a tough year healthy roof over our heads we're sitting here talking to you yep. and having this wonderful show. So yes. happy new year to you, Cynthia, as well as our viewers. Happy new year, doll. You know what? And the days are getting longer. We are now what? 15 days away from the long, the shortest day of the year. So any more daylight that there is, is, a, is always a good sign. It's a little more time that you can just be part of the, the big world instead of hold up. It's bad yeah. enough that we have to be inside, but when we're inside in the dark, there's not a lot of feeling of liberty. I just hibernate. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Summer, are we going to talk about New Year's resolutions? Tell me no. We are not. We, we're not, you guys. While we support you, if that's your thing. But for me, and I believe my girl Cynthia as well, we... <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> no, there's just nothing left that I, uh, that has been tried and failed that I want to revisit. Uh, I mean, sure. Have a vision, a goal, our plan. Fine. But yeah, resolutions, it's too much self-imposed pressure. Um, and it's not necessary. It, it's okay to strive for something, but give yourself grace to fall, to stumble, to not complete it and to fail. It's okay too. So, but if you've got one and you want us to hold you accountable, want to share it with the world, mm -hmm. you know how to get a hold of us. Tell us what it is, why you picked it. Maybe it's something that frankly, with the whole, the, these extraordinary situations, this, these conditions make all the sense in the world for you to give a shot to. We will back you up. Absolutely. So send us a note. Or even comment if you want the whole world to see it too. Either way, let us know. We, we support you in all your endeavors, no matter what. Yes. Well, in the spirit of new, 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 <laughs> we, <laughs> we thought we'd share with you some books that have been somewhat instrumental, particularly within the last year that we've come across. Um, well, for me, I came across last year uh, that was instrumental in just personal development and growth and left some type of lasting and impressionable impact. So today that's what we want to share with you. Um, Cynthia, did you want me to go first or? I'll, I'll go first. Okay. I'll go first. I'm so excited to share you guys. And I promise I am not going to like just take over this whole, this whole thing. Cause I, I really need to do a podcast episode about this. It's good on advanced TV history because I have talked about the fact that I had four dreams in the in 2019 and 2020. I had four dreams featuring Jane Fonda, and they were very strange. You know, it really it really required me to think a lot about what they meant because they what you know. Sure. So as a result, I think after maybe like the second dream. I decided, well, I guess I need to learn more about Jane because I don't totally know who I, who, who she is. And so this book, 2005, Jane Fonda, My Life So Far, if you had read no other book in 2021, or if you read this 15 years ago, I heartily recommend you revisit it because mm -hmm. what she does very intentionally, and she says so upfront, is she breaks her life down. At that time, she was in her mid sixties into chapters. And all of that is then revisited in the Netflix documentary that was done about her. Basically, it's called Jane Fonda, My Life in Five Acts. So she went from three acts here, kind of reframed her entire life and brought it into five acts. And they revolved around her husband's and her father and where, she, where her inner passions and her mission have brought her to the things that we see in her today, the things that she is still doing today at the age of, drum roll, 83. 
You guys, you know how we've been hearing before lockdown. Jane Fonda was getting arrested all the time. Yes, yes. So, so in addition to my life so far, 2005, Jane Fonda, and if you really want to have fun with it and you do audiobooks, just get the audiobook from the library because then you get Jane saying it in, in your head. It's great, right? Cool. Because this is a woman whose longevity is proven, proven. This little gem was a gift from my daughter. This is Jane on the cover of Movie Land oh in 1962. Oh my. And, if, and if you look closely, the headline is Jane Fonda, the girl who collected stardom and enemies overnight. Okay, in 1962, this is how she was positioned by the very um, male heavy media and popular culture. This is how she was positioned. Obviously, she didn't do herself any favors in Vietnam. And, and she gets to that in her book, talks a lot about the whole Hanoi Jane thing and how, she, how much she regrets it and how much she has done to apologize and to make, to, to make right as much as she could her relationship with Vietnam War vets. And, and that's how you got Coming Home, 1978, Jane Fonda and John Voight. So here it is, 1962, almost 60 years ago. And we still have her today appearing on magazines. So this is Jane, either with or without her real hair. This might've been right before she even took it down shorter on Bust Magazine. And this is from winter 2021. So I don't know what's going on with her hair because when you look at her on Instagram, it's shorter. And this is Activism Now, Jane Fonda, fighting back for 50 years. She's the one to watch. She's the Anthony Fauci of feminism, mm -hmm. even more so than, I would say, than, um, than Gloria Steinem, because Jane has been so visible all of these years. Wow. So it's, my, it's growth. It's growth in every different direction you would want. Now, as far as for you personally, what type of impact reading all of this and just watching her life, how has that been inspiration and fuel for you and what you do? You know, she revisits her, what she believes is her core mission. She talks about all of her relationships and her friendships. And in the book, she is called upon a couple different times, basically to lead. And yet she had never been told in her life that she was a leader. I find that interesting because it was affirming to me in many of my experiences throughout my life where I find myself in a position, I'm doing this and, and, and came to be criticized or, um, or undervalued or things like that. And so some of it is just, hey, if it happens to Jane and, it, and it's happening to me, then maybe, maybe there's about a gazillion other women this is happening to. And that fuels me to take my skills and my experiences and share them. And that's, it's some of the genesis of why we have the Summer and Cynthia show today. Absolutely. I, I love Jane and, and I admit I do not know her story as well as I should. Um, but I definitely in the last few years have been paying attention to my girl, like I mentioned earlier, out there getting arrested. I mean, Jane, was on the footsteps of the Capitol almost every day. Every Friday. Yep. Fire yes. Girl Fridays. Yep. Yes. And, and so that is when I was tuning in again. And then I have to also say not to reduce her to this moment because you are much larger than that, Jane, if you're watching. I'm just, yes, you are. Um, but of course, her monster-in-law. Oh my God, that's one of my favorite movies. And I adored her character in that. I'm just, I, again, I'm not, I'm not trying to reduce you to just that moment, but it is one of my favorite movies and mainly because of her. And she discusses that movie as really the one that brought her out of mothballs and, mm -hmm. and sent her through another round of plastic surgery and helped her find her voice. I mean, she's always had a voice, but helped her realize that the world really still valued her courage and yeah. her outspokenness. And oh. so she is role modeled now for how many generations? I was going to wow. say. Well, I yeah. mean, she's younger. She's of technically the greatest generation. She's pre-baby boom. Yeah. In 1937. 
Mm-hmm. So all of the baby boom, all of Gen X, all of the millennials, and then whatever's after the millennials, because Greta, she and Greta Thunberg are like, you know, right. So what was on your shelf in 2020 that I talked about on, on my podcast? In fact, my last episode of the Unconventional Woman closing out 20 was the year of books for me. Uh, obviously, with more time, it, it just in a, in a thirst for just knowledge and, and soothing my soul, I had an, an opportunity to read more books than I'd ever had pretty much since school probably. And that's college, <laughs> grad school and, and alike. I've always had that resolution every January, I'm gonna read this amount of books for the year and never did it by the way, until last year. <laughs> um, and, and so prepping for this episode, it was hard because there was a couple of books that I was torn with, but I decided to go ahead and, and share the four agreements. I have the e-version for everybody by Don Miguel Reese. And um, and we'll have links in the show notes to Summer's book and to and to the one that I recommend. Absolutely. And, and just a little side note, it, I was really torn between the alchemist and this, but for this purpose, I'm going to throw in the, the four agreements. Many of you may be familiar. It is simply about what the title suggests. There are these four basically laws of life. And there's no, I'm going to share them with you in a few minutes. And I also think the order is by design. You build upon each other. And, and so the four agreements. Be impeccable with your words. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions and always do your best. He expands tremendously on each of these agreements, but probably the one that I struggle with and want to always remind myself daily to be mindful of is being impeccable with your words. For me, I'm naturally high strung. I can fly off the handle very easily at times, just depending how wound up I am. And and, and there's sometimes when I'm having internal thoughts and really talking down to myself, Mm -hmm. you know how you you sometimes say things that you would never say to someone else, but you say to yourself. And, And it is all about watching your words and everything that I just mentioned. And, and words mean things. Words have power. Yes, they do. And, and so being impeccable with your words is all about not thinking before you speak. Because because again, a lot of these times it can be thoughts in your heads that are manifesting and, and harvesting. But um, it, it's just really about being kind to yourself, your thoughts, your words, really to yourself and and but of course how you treat others as well um for me again there are moments in time that i mean i can quickly get on twitter um and and it'll invoke all kinds of emotions but hey maybe that maybe i don't feel like cussing out trump today um you know so i won't (laughs) so it's things like that but, you know, don't take anything personally was really good. And I've gotten better with that just over experience and, and maturity. But it, it's really just as simple as that. You know, everything is not meant to, for us to internalize and take as gospel, yeah. you know. Yep. Um, and, and don't make assumptions. Sounds simple and easy, but we do it all the time. Hence, why we're in the situation we're in right now and have always been in. Um, and, and always do your best. While that is so cheesy and cliche, it really is about giving your all in whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Because, and at the end of the day, as long as you've done that and you lead with that, the results don't matter. So it's not about doing your best and winning. Right, right. Because you can fail mm-hmm. and do miserable. But as long as you, at the end of the day, can say, I gave it my all, mm-hmm. that's literally all that matters. That you day know? was worth living. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and it can go either way. Again, the results are not contingent on you always making a promise to do your best. So, so I have a question for you. Sure. How, how did you come to uh, have this book on your list or how did it rise to the top of your pile? 
I am actually going to give credit. It's, it's two women in my life. The first one, Gabriel, um, G- Gabby is what I call her. Mm-hmm. The Gabriella Painter. I'm going to sh- shout you out. Love you. Um, was reading it. But actually, another dear friend of mine, Brianna, I love you in Canada. Um, she and I have done this active book club. So I say, make it fun with anything. If you can get another partner, it, it's easier. But she and I decided, okay, this month, this is the book we're going to read. So we actually read it together. And um, so, yeah, that's it, it, it was recommended. Mm-hmm. I heard of this book several years. I even have the Audible copy of it. And I just, when you're, it's funny how life, sometimes you're just not ready to receive something. And, and last spring I was, so here we are. Um, but yeah, it was between my friend Gabby and Brianna, it, it, it is the reason why I, I went on and, and read the book and completed it. And that's the definition of a good friend. Totally. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, lady. <laughs> so, you know, there are, there are so many other growth sorts of books out there. Just challenge. I, I mean, I will, I'm going to obviously use lockdown and the opportunity to read more and to watch more TV and to watch deeper movies and things, to challenge myself, to challenge my thinking, to be thinking about new music instead of old music, even though music you know, provides you that sense of comfort and, un- and, and lack of change. I think what we've got to manage right now is the fact that nothing has changed now in almost a year. And that's room to grow. It is. And, and one of my other things that kind of leaving and putting a button on 20 was about giving time grace. And, and what I mean by that is what you literally just said. A whole lot is not going to change just because it's January. A lot <laughs> is still lingering. I mean, you know, even into the new year. And that's okay. Um, but better days are ahead. And so that's kind of being impeccable with your words and and just you know putting that type of energy out there that's not to say there won't be a, a set of new challenges within this year we are very hopeful though that it won't be as bad but you know things aren't magically rosy now just because right. we're in 2021 yep so it, it, everyone's household situation is different but if you have the gift of time and you have an opportunity and a library card talk to your friends talk to Summer, talk to Summer's friends, and uh, find find the book that's going to fill you a little bit and, and steer you into a better 2021 and a better mindset, because we, we have to care first and foremost about ourselves and our own futures, and that growth is only going to come through thinking new thoughts. Yeah, yeah. Soothing your soul is of the utmost importance. If you don't have anything inside, you don't have a lot to give out, so... Right. It's okay to be stingy with some self-care. Um, feed your soul first and then pour into others. So, Yep, absolutely. Great. So lots of information in the show notes. Drop us a line if you've got a book for, that you read this past year or many years ago that you find really has made a difference in your, in your world, um, in your mindset, in how you value yourself because we value you too. Send it to the email right here. Leave it in the comments, whatever you want to do. We are pretty darn accessible. Absolutely. Um, Summer puts all of her best thoughts into, she brings great thoughts to this, but she also like does her own thing through the Unconventional Woman podcast. Subscribe. You know, she, this is a walk through her life. And it's, a, and it's a life that I am still just getting to know, having met her a couple of years ago, but never in person and, you know, on the phone and stuff. I'm at Advanced TV Her Story, and mine is, well, we're going to talk about that in the next episode, actually. So stay tuned, and we're going to talk a little bit about our podcasts. But in the meantime, thank you. Happy New Year. Hope these, this whole holiday season has provided you an opportunity to catch your breath. Most importantly, you survived 2020. Yes. Take care. Peace out.